Hey there, I'm taking a moment tonight to talk about what I've been working on over the past few weeks. And it is a keycap generator uh, because I need things to be ready for when I make my fully 3D printable keyboard. Might as well have some 3D printable keycaps to go along with it. And as you can see, I've got a very boring basic keycap here with a ridiculously thick wall thickness and no stem. Uh, the reason why I don't, uh, the, the wall thickness is uh, super big, will be apparent in a little bit, uh, but I've disabled the stem just to speed up rendering time. But just to prove you that the stem works, I can tell it to render the stem and there you go. And it's got this little side support. So if you print it on its side, um, the stem will still print and you can actually enable those for whatever sides you want, just to give you an example. But the stem is uh, pretty boring. Uh, the only interesting thing here is you can say true if you wanted to print it flat. And you get this awesome built-in support that you don't need to enable supports in your slicer. And that's really important because your slicer wants to put bring the supports all the way up to under the keycap up here, and that's totally not necessary. <clears throat> so we're gonna turn that back to false because we don't need supports. Um, and just support. Oop, that's stem support. Let's turn the stem off entirely. We don't care about that. There we go. And I'm trying to come up with a better way than this, um, but it works. You can pick what you want. And I've got a bunch of um, special rendering modes if you want to pr preview things as well. But I'll get into that in a minute. So let's talk about my uh, keycap generator here. Now, if you want to just generate like a, a basic keycap and then change legends around, that's really easy. So let's say you wanted a DSA keycap. Uh, and you'll notice it's nice, it's got that interesting DSA squished surface. Uh, right now I've got support for DSA and DCA, but eventually I'll support support them all. Um, I've actually got the profiles open here and it's actually pretty easy to make a new profile. You just basically copy and paste this and then plug in the um, settings specific to that keycap and then you can actually uh, generate whole rows of them at a time. You can basically, basically generate an entire keyboard. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Let's just talk about fooling around in the keycap playground. You see that up there? That's what this particular file is for. Um, let's generate, let's fool around, right? That's what, that's what I wanted to do tonight. Just let's, let's just fool around. So I'm not gonna generate any particular profile. I'm just gonna disable that. And you can put whatever you want here, as long as it's not, you know, one of the supported profiles, it doesn't care. Uh, I can change the key height, say 10, that's good. Now, uh, let's make it wider, like a space bar, right? Look at that. But that doesn't look right, right? Space bars don't actually look like that. Let's fix that and make it an in, uh, inverted dish. That's what that's called. So let me go down to here to dish invert, and let's set that to true. And we should get an inverted dish. There we go. Now it looks like a normal space bar, right? And we can actually tilt this. So we'll give it a little bit of a tilt if we want, one way or the other. Oh, I broke something. Oh, you know what that is? I broke that. I just broke that today. <laughs> I can fix that though. That's not a big deal. Uh, the reason why it's off like that, that, the dish on top is off, is because I added a new feature. Let's actually, let's take a look at this new feature. It's called curve tilt or uh, dish tilt curve. Let's turn that on. And I bet you that's going to fix this problem here. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So if you turn on curve support for the dish, it will um, curve right along with this cool way of curving things. Uh, so let's actually turn that uh, off for a sec, just for a second, so I can demonstrate it a little, demonstrate dish tilt a little bit better. Let's turn off dish invert because we're not making a space bar really. Let's go back to making a normal key, and we'll make it just normal size. There we go. Got a normal key. So normal keys don't actually look like this. They actually have a tilt to the dish. So let's just give this dish uh, a normal tilt of say like uh, six degrees, right? And normal keycaps have the dish moved to the front or the back. So let's do that. Um, no, that's dish Y. That's not what I want. I want key top. Let's move it back, move it back about three. So now we got a flat top, flat back. It's a little too much, it's just a two, right? So you can make your key however you want. You can tilt the dish however you want. Uh, it supports different types, and one of my favorites is the inverted pyramid, which apparently isn't working for some reason. Let's go to sphere, see if that works. Yeah, there we go. I'll have to fix that. So this is a spherical dish um, for things like um, 
you know, that's like a DSA or an SA keycap has that spherical dish and cylinder is basically what everybody, what everybody uses. Now, what's cool about this though. So look at this profile here. Uh, we can, you know, raise or lower it, make it wider or longer, whatever we want. But let's turn that curve feature back on. Check this out. <laughs> it's just a little change, you know, if you just give it a little bit of tilt, like we give it a little bit, but we let's try something a little bit more, a little more drastic. So you can make some seriously curved keycap profiles for yourself with this. And let's do the DSA thing and have the uh, corner radius get bigger as it goes up. Let's go down here. You can actually turn that on for corner radius turf, curve, and this is like an amplitude. Yeah, doesn't that look nice? Now let's go, let's go to the next level and let's turn on polygon curve. What's that? Oh, it bowed it. See that? It bowed the uh, keycap outwards. And we get really extreme here too. We can go like, let's go like 14.5 here. Haha. <laughs> and it actually takes negative values too. Negative 4.5. Look at that. We, now we've got our volcano keycap. And this is the reason why I made the walls super thick. So that when you do things like this, it doesn't um, make a hole in the side. Uh, and for reference, I am perfectly capable of having the walls uh, on the inside match what's on the outside. But, you know, key switches aren't like that. Key switches have a top that's basically just like this. So we, and we don't want to we don't want to have it mismatched key switch to keycap. So I keep the inside pretty much always this exact shape so that it will match a normal keycap. But let's let's move on. Let's let's change this even more. Let, let's do something really strange. Let's add a rotation to this so that with every layer, it rotates uh, left or right to give us this sort of like uh, squished accordion look. Let's go over here and we'll enable polygon layer rotation. Okay. Um, actually, I turned on, I left, left this on. I'm spoiling things, I'm spoiling it. But here we go. So isn't that kind of neat? So you can make these, these kind of weird looking keycaps, but that's not the cool part. Let's turn the corner radius off entirely. And now we've got more of a low poly look. And let's go with like four polygon layers. And we'll do like five for the rotation. And there we go. Now we've got a, a nice smushed low poly keycap design. And all we did was change a few parameters, right? So you can make your keycap however you like. Let's do something else too. Let's let's change this up. Let's go with like uh, 40 layers. And we'll go with like uh, zero point. Actually, no, we'll go with one. One degree, this is, these are degrees. So one degree of rotation. And let's turn on polygon rotation, see what that does. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? Now it does eat up a lot of CPU to do that. And I've had OpenSCAD open for days and days, so it's not running, running the fastest right now. Um, but let's actually turn current corner radius back on and leave that curve there. And I bet this is gonna look a lot cooler. <laughs> Give it a second. Because there's 40 layers, it has to calculate each one individually. Look at that. Is that cool or what? We probably don't need uh, 40 layers. But I'm going to increase the amount of rotation while we're at it. Let's have a look and see what this one looks like. Oh, yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? And you can use the uh, whatever dish you want. I bet you the pyramid's going to magically start working. Nope, still not working. I wonder why. I must have broken it earlier. Let's go back to cylinder. Uh, and dish C is at think one for some reason, but it's probably a good uh, thing to show you. So see how the dish isn't quite lined up here with the keycap? You can actually, you know, when you play around with the keycap, the, the, the dish can get a little messed up, but you can fix that, right? So I can say, move the dish one to the right, or, you know, four to the right, and now lower it, negative two. And now we've got, you know, keycap that works and see how this little part here is bro broken through the top well we can fix that too because there's a, there's a depth to it so the dish depth is how much this curves so it's going to be one uh, millimeter less than the top of the curve uh, but there's actually also a dish thickness so we could just increase that and that would go away it just makes this top part thicker so if you want to make some really thick keycaps you can do that now let's go back to a normal looking key for a moment here uh, I'm just going to go with like a, a positive value here. So you know what? I'm just going to set this to zero. No curve. But I do want the corner radius curve. I'm going to leave that there. I'm also going to set this back to two, to 10 rather, and change this to zero. 
All right, now we're back to normal, partially back to normal. Well, that's an interesting shape. Let's fix the dish. And like I said, this is the keycap playground. No, I actually do want that to stay there. And we don't need this. There we go. So now we've got a, a reasonably normal looking keycap with a cool curve. Let's add some legends, right? Because that's one of the cool features of this. I'm actually going to change the dish tilt because that's kind of extreme. Let's go with like a four degree tilt. All right. Now let's turn on some legends. Uh, we'll start with something simple. We'll go with like a smiley face here. And I've got the font size set to seven for this particular one. Now note that this is an array, right? So if you have a whole bunch of things in the array, uh, this will correspond to the first one here and the first one here. So you can have a different font size font um, and you know character for every single legend that you want. And is there a limit to how many legends you have? No, this array, it can be as long as you want. So if you want a thousand legends on here, you know, go nuts. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's a little smiley face. Now note that uh, OpenSCAD doesn't really do a good job of rendering in real time unless you're looking right at it. But if you do the full render, you know, F6, it shouldn't take that long, but it should still work. Uh, it'll look much nicer after this. My CPU is taxed at the moment because I'm recording. Ah, there we go. As you can see, it looks much nicer. Uh, and I also added a feature to solve this problem so you don't have to render F6 every time to visualize legends. And I hit F5 for preview, and <laughs> now I can see them uh, where they are, right? So let's actually turn the wall thickness back to something normal since we've got a normal-ish keycap. There we go. Now we can see the legends. So that's just an example of what the legends, you know, that you can apply to legends. Now let's actually do some cool stuff with legends. Let's get rid of this smiley face legend. And let's actually give us a whole bunch of legends. Comment this. See how KLE, that stands for Keyboard Layout Editor. Uh, and down here, I've got this thing called Legend Transfer, you know, tr for Translate, right? So I'm going to comment out what I've got here. And for reference, OpenSCAD, in order to actually make the centered, I needed to put it off by uh, negative 0.15 millimeters. It's very strange. I don't know why it does that. Anyways, moving on. And you'll note that uh, this keycap library supports all of keyboard layer editors' uh, settings. Uh, this is basically the order in which legends appear when you export them from keyboard layer editor. And I have been working on a Python script to basically generate a profile like this uh, from Keyboard Layout Editor that automatically puts the legends precisely where you want them, which is sweet, right? Now, obviously, you're not going to want this many legends. And see how that's getting cut off there? That's easy enough to fix. You just um, you know, increase this by a little bit. So this is zero, and that should fix zero. See, I just moved it up a smidge. Uh, on the z-axis that's what lets me do that um it's supposed to do that automatically uh, but with this curved keycap and all the translations sometimes it can get a little bit off with the math but it generally works right uh and you definitely don't want to be using this many legends unless you have like a like a one millimeter nozzle on your you know something super duper teeny tiny on your uh 3d printer or maybe you could do it with a you know a laser resin or something like that so move that back the way it was this is just to demonstrate that, you know, we can support this many legends. And you can actually have legends on the side here because we also support legend rotation. So let's take four here and see how it's rotated 60 degrees. So that's just, that's how you make a front legend. You just, it's basically a legend here. Let me turn on visualization, legend visualizations. You'll see what I mean. See how it's sticking way out there? <laughs> Shoots to the end. So let's take four and we'll put it off on the side here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to rotate it around the Y axis. And I've already labeled them here, so I'm just going to say negative uh, 90. Oh, wrong axis. I want to go to the, the Z axis. Rotate around the Z. There we go. So now my four legend is over here, and you can obviously, you know, you just fiddle with it a little bit, and you'll get it positioned where you want. Uh, and you can actually set a second legendary legend trans and a second rotation. And why is that? Because sometimes in OpenSCAD, you want to put it there and then move it up, right? Uh, it just becomes simpler mentally <laughs> trying to figure out two axes is rotating at the same time. Uh, the math in your head can get a little little funky. So that's that. That's the, my little preview of my keycap playground. And it obviously it supports a lot more stuff than what you're seeing here. This is just a taste. Uh, one, some things I haven't got finished yet is uh, stabilizer support, but that's basically the last thing on my to-do list. 
I'll be working on that very shortly, and then I will be releasing this. So hopefully everyone will be able to enjoy my keycap uh, playground very soon.